what's up y'all welcome back to pillow talk uh, my name is shane wilson and as always i am your host as you can see we're not in my bedroom today we are on site here at north church and i'm gonna interview north church's very own pastor rodney fouts pastor rodney you want to say what's up to the people hey everybody so glad to be a part of this episode with the shane wilson <laughs> i've heard about it read about it and i'm just honored to be asked uh, Pastor Rodney, I'm really honored. I know you're a busy guy. You got a lot of things going on. So it's really a pleasure to have you here, um, taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. So a little bit of background on me and my history at North Church. I actually started here in 2005. So as long as I can remember, I was four years old then. Pastor Rodney has been my lead pastor, my head pastor. Um, and it's been an absolute pleasure um, attending church um, underneath him for all these years, with him for all these years. Um, and it's, it's really just a blessing to have him here on the show today. So we're going to ask him a few questions about him, um, about his family, about North Church, um, about the different things in his life. So I really hope you guys enjoy this episode. And we can just go ahead and get into it. The first question I have is actually about North Church. Um, congratulations, you, just, you and North Church and uh, Pastor Shannon just celebrated your 20-year birthday for North Church. So that is incredible. Um, so I just want to ask you, how how did you and Shannon and whoever else was involved in that, how did you guys land on the name North Church? Well, uh, first off, just you, know, you mentioned you've been attending North since 2005 mm -hmm. in your family. And obviously at your age, you weren't <laughs> inside the, right. making that choice yourself. It was <laughs> your parents making that choice for you. And uh, but you but even when you came to the point that you could choose uh, where to go to church, you stayed with us. And so that's an honor to be able to have you. And then, of course, uh, your bro uh, <laughs> is uh, with us and been with us uh, working here on the team for the last over two years now, mm -hmm. uh, starting yeah. his third year. And we're excited about the future yeah. of him being a part of our team. And so and your mom and dad, uh, just a terrific blessing to us. So first off that. And then now, just really the name, um, North Church, really uh, was something that uh, some people say, well, it's because of the north side of Oklahoma City, right? Well, uh, um, that could, but that's not the reason. Actually, we could have it on the south side of Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. and I still think that the name would be applicable because the reason why we chose that is that as I was thinking and praying about a name, I wanted one that was simple, mm -hmm. straightforward, yeah. easy to remember, but also something that spoke with uh, some type of significance. And the word north was meant to represent the North Star. Okay. And so the North Star, but I didn't want to call it the North Star Church. Yeah. So we just called it North Church. So uh, for out, throughout centuries, um, before there was compasses, which, you know, you go back, most of world history did not have a compass or did not have mm -hmm. uh, any type of uh, electronic uh, guidance or GPS systems to be able to lead people where north yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, you had the North Star. Okay. And the North Star was the one fixed point uh, in the, you know, galaxy that people could look at from the earth to be able to find direction for life. Mm -hmm. And so if you were wandering across the desert, if you could find that North Star, you could know your direction. If you could find the North Star out in the ocean, you could find direction. Mm -hmm. If you were in the forest, wherever it is, and it was a fixed point that was always consistent that could provide people the direction that they needed for wherever their destination is well we believe that jesus is mm -hmm. that fixed star yeah that he is the reason for living and if we can just point people to jesus then they can have direction for anything they need in life and so that's kind of how that name came about i will say that's a lot cooler than it just being on the north side of the highway absolutely <laughs> you got that right <laughs> Wow, that's a, that's a really interesting. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, I've been going here all these years, and I didn't know that's a really awesome story. I really like that. Um, my next question about North Church. So, if you if you Google North Church, it'll say North Church, North Church is a non denominational Christian church in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. If if somebody who doesn't know about North Church, if you're watching this and you don't know about North Church, welcome. Um, I'll put North Church's website down in the description below, so you can um, click on that but they'll say that it's a non-denominational church. How would you explain that to somebody that has no idea what that means? Well, I mean, when you think of it, a, a denomination is an organization of churches mm -hmm. that basically is controlled or led by a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of denominations out there. Uh, but we chose to be a part of them. It so it's kind of confusing sometimes. We, we are part of a covering of churches. Mm. And so uh, that is the Assemblies of God. Mm. And so the Assemblies of God is 13,000 churches in, in America. Mm -hmm. uh, globally, uh, it is many, many more times wow. over than that. 
Uh, it is the largest worldwide church other than the Catholic Church um, globally. Wow. It does a lot of great missions. Yeah. And so we are a part of the Assemblies of God, but the Assemblies of God is not a denomination. Mm -hmm. It's a cooperative fellowship of churches. Okay. So when we say we're a non-denominational church, we are not a part of a denomination, but we are a part of a fellowship of churches okay. that allows us to network together to be able to do missions, uh, to provide accountability, to be able to provide a covering. And so it's really the best of both worlds. Yeah, absolutely. There's not somebody telling us what to do and how to run our mm -hmm. church uh, locally, but we yet we can still uh, work with a larger group of churches to yeah. make a difference and impact for the world. Absolutely. I love that. Um, I love that. So you, you touched a little bit on... Uh, a lot of the awesome things that North Church has done, um, they've, we, right now we have a heart for his house, um, and there's so many good organizations and causes that that's going to. I want to ask you personally, um, I know you've gone on a lot of different mission trips, you've done a lot of different things. Of all of those things that you personally have done, which of those to you was the most powerful? I know in all of those, you're going to see, you're going to see Jesus working all the time in all of those things, but to you, um, and all the mission trips you've gone on, and all the events that you've um, been a part of, which which of those to you has been like, wow, this this to me, I can feel Jesus all the time when I'm here. This is incredible. Well, that that's a large question mm -hmm. that um, he he's asking the questions on the fly right now. So yeah, he he doesn't have time. the questions so they're beforehand, not, they're not so pre, he's not he just set. has to say whatever whatever he thinks of. And so. I can think of tons of trips that I've been on over the years mm -hmm. that were very impacting for me yeah. and also for the organization and the people that we took with us. Mm -hmm. uh, been to Ireland. Yeah. Uh, I've been to the very southern parts of um, Mexico, uh, Costa Rica. I've been to um, Costa Rica. I've been to um, uh, Dominican Republic, Haiti. I've been to Africa. I've been mm -hmm. to a lot of different places. But I would say that it was in... Um, uh, Dominican Republic, Mocha, where has been one of the greatest, most refreshing, not just about a one-time moment, mm -hmm. but the ongoing ministry. Yeah. Uh, because we've actually partnered with uh, the church there in Mocha that is making an incredible difference in some of the most impoverished, struggling uh, families uh, in, that, in the entire country of uh, the Dominican. And to be able to see over now 15 plus years yeah. where we have partnered with them to help provide educational needs, some clothing needs, food needs, medical needs, uh, but more importantly, the spiritual needs of these young people who now have actually, many of them have went through the school system, went yeah. even into college, have become dentists. Their lives have been completely changed. And to see that lifelong, mm -hmm. to see that ongoing impact yeah. is so powerful. Absolutely. And so, encouraging. so I would say... It's really not just a one event, but that process of partnering now for over 15 years yeah. um, there in the Dominican Republic. Wow, that's really a beautiful thing. Thank you for sharing that. And when most people think of the Dominican Republic, uh, they think of they the think vacation. They think of beaches, They think of the vacation they yeah. went on. Uh, I've been there like 17 times, mm -hmm. and I've never went to the uh, tourist mm -hmm. uh, destinations or beaches that yeah. an American goes to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we go there and we serve yeah. the most important. You're in the areas areas that you needed to be in. Absolutely. Awesome. I love that. Um, so a question that I've asked here on Pillow Talk before, and I'm not going to ask you this because I know you, I've heard you describe yourself as a Bible nerd before. Um, you have a little bit of a catchphrase that you say sometimes on stage that the Bible's not boring. You're boring. Um, and so I, I love that. So I, I, sometimes I'll ask people, what, what is your favorite Bible verse? But I know that's a loaded question. That's a hard question, especially for someone that you, that you study your Bible often. So I want to ask you right Right now, is there just a verse that's just been on your heart that you just have been wanting to share? A verse on my heart that I've been wanting to share. That's, that's a big one, actually, yeah. itself. Um, because, I mean, like, to me, it's almost every day there's a new verse that I'm wanting to share. Yeah. And actually, I do do that. And if, if you're listening, watching out there, that, and you want to check out every single day, and I've done mm -hmm. this now for almost three years publicly on, on like, uh, social media, mm -hmm. Uh, every single day for three years now, I have posted a verse from the Old Testament mm -hmm. and one from the New Testament or Psalms and Proverbs. Yeah. And then I've written something about it Yeah. for now for three wow. years, 365 wow. days a year. Yeah. And so I'm going to continue doing that with the Lord's help. Yeah. And so I want to say that there's one verse. Yeah. I'm saying it's every day. You know, the, the Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. Mm -hmm. L literally, it means that every single one is brand new. And so to me, as long as you're in God's word every day, he will give you fresh bread yeah. for the moment. Wow. 
And because, I mean, uh, f- there's nothing better than fresh bread. Yeah. I mean, you, you can eat bread that's two days old, three days old, mm-hmm. and it's still good. Mm-hmm. But when you take something straight out of the oven. Absolutely. And you pop it in your mouth, it doesn't get any finer than that. Mm-hmm. And so literally that's what God's word has been for me. It's been my daily bread that feels so good when you eat of it daily. And so I'm mm-hmm. going to say that there's one. I'm going to say that there's yeah. every single day. And today in, in the book of uh, Isaiah, it was talking about that we will rise again. Is that this life is not the only life that we're yeah. going to live again. Come and on. so I took something and wrote on that. And that was so encouraging to me. And I think for many others that that read that and, and read what I had to say. Yeah. It was just so, uh, refreshing. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it's bread. Wow. That's awesome. So if, if you're struggling, if you're, if you're struggling to find motivation to read the Bible, I think that's, that's a good motivation right there is it's bread. It's that fresh bread every day. Um, I love that. So another question I have for you, it's just about, um, about the Bible is, do you have a favorite biblical figure? Obviously, well, we won't count Jesus. Jesus should be all of our favorite biblical <laughs> figures. Um, my, Sawyer used to always ask me, who, who's, who's your favorite character in the Bible? I would be like, Jesus. And he'd be like, okay, well, obviously. So other than Jesus, do you have like a favorite biblical figure that you just love whenever you're reading about them in the Bible or reading something that they wrote? Um, do you have anyone that stands out to you? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. I, I, I think about oftentimes when somebody says, hey, what'd you learn at church today? Uh, I learned about Jesus. <laughs> that's, it's okay. the right answer. Okay, yeah. But. yeah all right, now that's, that's, you know, and sometimes it can be a cover up too. Mm-hmm. Um, man, there are so many that I just absolutely love yeah. in the Bible. But you know what? I can relate to Peter. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why I can relate to Peter, and I think that's why I like him so mm-hmm. well, is because, dude, he's always sticking his foot in his mouth. <laughs> I do that a lot. The dude was tripping over himself. Peter's a relatable guy. He yes. makes some mistakes. He was, I mean, I mean, Jesus obviously said, hey, you're going to lead the church. Yeah. But yet you find him messing up again and again, mm-hmm. which is also so encouraging because it speaks to that God does not give up on us. Yeah, that's good. And that he trusts with us the incredible things uh, that he wants to do mm-hmm. with us flawed, messed up people. Yeah. And so... I like him because, and he's one of my favorite ones because um, even when he messed up, he kept crawling back to Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. And saying, you know, I'm sorry, let's do this again. Yeah. And God was there always for him. So I'd say Peter. That's good. I like that answer. I do like that answer. One of my, one of my favorite ones is whenever he's like Jesus and uh, goes up on the, it's called the Mount of Transfiguration in the passage. Mm-hmm. And Jesus goes up with uh Peter, James, and John, and they go up on this uh, mountain, and then, like, Moses and Elijah show up. Yeah. Like, they come back from the dead. They're there. Like, yeah. And then Jesus is always in his glorified body. So mm-hmm. all three of those, are, and Peter's like, the, the Bible says he does not know what to say. So what does he do? He opens up his mouth and says something, <laughs> which is a grave mistake, and I've been there and done that. Yeah. He says, hey, let's build, and Jesus is like, Peter, just, <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> just, just, you, I mean, just watch. Right yeah. And so uh, I can relate. That's awesome. I love that. Um, so obviously you're very passionate about a lot of things in the Bible. Um, I can tell when, if you've ever seen Pastor Rodney preach, you can tell he's passionate about spreading the good news of the Lord, um, about preaching about the Bible. I want to ask you, is there something when you're like, I I'm, when, whenever you see it and you're like, this is what I want to preach about, and it's your, like, your favorite thing, it, it just really fires you up more than anything else um, that you're just so excited to preach about. Is there a certain, ask that question again, what, what's the, Is there like a s- specific area or certain thing that you just love to preach about? Like more than everything else, obviously you can tell that you have a passion for preaching, mm-hmm. um, but above everything else is when you see that and you're just like, that, that's it, that is, that is it. I think there's probably two things mm-hmm. that, um, that if I were to just draw from the one to preach yeah. from, is number one is forgiveness okay yeah Uh, specifically not being offended Mm -hmm. and to be able to walk through healing of forgiveness what it means to forgive others the wrongs they have done against you so i think that that is probably one of them that Mm -hmm. if i were to say that it would be a go-to for me Mm -hmm. that i would want people to hear about Mm -hmm. um freely you have been forgiven it's our responsibility to freely forgive others yeah and it is probably the hardest thing for people to cope with and deal with is the offenses um, and they, so then they take, they, they're offended yeah. and then offended people become, um, defensive people yeah. and then they hurt people. 
and we don't want to be that. So that's the one. And then the other one is just a passionate pursuit of Jesus. I like to communicate this just like revival spirit. Of Absolutely. Life. Let's go after Jesus. Yeah. Let's pursue him. Let's put aside everything else in our life and let's go. Let's, I mean, jobs, relationships, mm-hmm. everything. Let's chase Jesus. Yeah. And those are kind of the two topics that I would like to preach on more than anything else. Wow. I like that. I like those answers. So this next question, um, it's a little bit, we're changing gears a little bit. It's, okay. it's, it's a little sillier. Um, it's not about, it's not about um, your faith or anything like that. It's, but we'll see what your answer is. So I want you to imagine for a second, you're trapped on a desert island. Okay. You can only bring three things okay. onto that island. Your wife cannot be one of those things. Oh, Your wife cannot be one. She, trust me, though. She will be happy <laughs> yeah. that she said I could not take her. So. so what three things would you take with you on that desert island? That's a, it's a tough question. It's a tough one. Yeah. But I, I, I would have to say, well, this is kind of corny because we've been talking about the spiritual yeah. the bible that's a if good can, that's a I, good I, answer I that, bible, that's a good answer i mean because i really believe yeah. that it's, it is what it is and all this yeah. stuff i've got to say bible um wow and the other two things um man i would say some type of um sharp device like a knife or okay some type yeah of, like uh, a knife or machete or something machete like that or something like okay. that that i could have yeah and um then the third thing, like just one thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say a pair of um, a, of good, long-lasting, like thongs or tennis shoes or something. Okay, to my yeah, that's what I, I like those answers. I like I like with the second, the second and third one. You kind of you were thinking more like the survival side of it. Like, Absolutely. okay, how how can I how can I realistically make myself? Make myself I've, last I've watched, a little I've watched longer. Some of shows. Yeah. In fact, I, I love to watch some of these shows, especially the one that's like the uh, the naked and afraid. <laughs> yeah, and where they get to bring feet, they get to bring like one item and oh, their yeah, feet they are always their, their feet yeah. are always a major issue. Mm-hmm. And if you can't, you know, and so if I could have something to protect my feet and and you can get around a lot better, yeah, um, it'd be great. Those are that's those are really good answers. Those okay. are solid answers. <laughs> those are solid answers. Um, this next question, I want you to close your eyes for a second. I want you to imagine. You're sitting at the table, and the perfect sandwich is in front of you. What is on that perfect sandwich, that perfect Rodney Fout sandwich? What would be on that sandwich? Yeah, so I I love my meat, but I, I love some good ham, okay. uh, some thick ham. And then I want some, um, I want an avocado on there. I want it, I want some a little bit of salt and pepper. Uh, I want some tomato and lettuce. And um, I love lots of the, uh, any type of greens I can have in this onion. Um, uh, let me think what, pretty much you throw anything on there that's green along with plenty of ham. Yeah. And I can do the cheese too. Yeah. Um, sometimes I try to avoid the cheese, but, uh, but I like cheese. Mm-hmm. So pretty much all of that stuff. And then I would like to cover it with a little bit of oil and vinegar to yeah. give it a little bit of, a, um, a, you know, a take away any dryness that yeah. possibly could be there. Yeah. And, and I'm good to go. What kind of bread are you going to go for on this sandwich? Are you gonna um, have? yeah, I would like, and on the, on the breads, a lot of times I, I do. His that. mouth is watering a little I, bit. Actually, I can actually, see it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> right, right now what I've been doing is actually the way I've been eating mm-hmm. is I don't do any bread. Oh I yeah. I wrap it in uh, like lettuce. Like lettuce wrap. Eat okay. those things. Wow. But, but I do love my bread. It's yeah. just that I try to avoid lots of bread. I got you. Yeah. And so, um, I, I like sourdough bread and I like just a plain, uh, multigrain. Let's go with a multigrain bread. Okay. It's yeah. fresh done. Wow. I like that a lot. Okay. So, um, Pastor Rodney, I, the wor- word around the church is, I'll use the word uncommon. You have some uncommon eating habits, mm-hmm. um, particularly like, like peels of fruits and like rinds. Okay. Is that true? Do you eat like... Heard, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. Is that true? I think so, maybe. You think so? I want to ask you, where, where did that come from? Like, um, cause, so I, I've heard, and I think there was even a video posted on social media once, um, I think it was maybe you eating like a banana peel or some orange peel or something like that. 
And I've had an anonymous person from the church, I, I won't reveal who it is, but it was Sawyer, um, who told me that you do, you do, f will, will eat the parts of the fruit that majority of people won't eat. So I'm not going to say that's weird or anything, but it's not super common. Wh why, why do you, where does that come from? Why do you, why do you choose to do that? If you choose to do that, or you can put this rumor to bed. If, when if you grow up so poor mm. and so hungry, you'll just eat anything that's before you. Yeah. And when you're realizing this may be my last meal, mm -hmm. you'll eat even that pill. I'm just I'm joking a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 couldn't I, I, could, I could tell he was kind of trying to keep a straight yeah, face, no, but no. I didn't want to laugh. No, it's, I, I, I actually, when, when I was young, I just started saying like, I read something on some yeah. nutrient values yeah. in regards to the pill. Mm -hmm. So like a uh, potato, I started eating the pill of the potato. And mm -hmm. so do a baked potato. I eat not only the potato on the inside, but I eat the, whole potato yeah um an apple i started thinking like i don't know if this makes sense but if you eat the pill of the apple there's actually a little bit more nutrients yeah. added to that but then why not the core yeah and so i eat the entire apple okay and so a lot of times the, the stem i might not eat i mean actually i chew on it so much that it mm -hmm. becomes almost i can swallow yeah. it and yeah. i have swallowed them before but sometimes yeah. i'll take the stem and throw it away okay but i pretty much eat the entire apple yeah Okay, an orange, I eat the entire orange. Now, there's a few orange peelings that have really a bitter taste to them that I don't want to eat, but most of them I eat. Uh, lemons, I eat pretty much the entire thing. Wow. Uh, I'll eat um, limes, a, a, a lot of different things. Now, yeah. there's some things that I don't. Somebody said, do you eat, right. a, yeah. do you eat the peeling of a cantaloupe? No, I don't. <laughs> it just doesn't. It's like cardboard, I think. And, and I don't eat the banana either. You mentioned banana, but mm -hmm. I don't eat the okay. uh, peel that's, of the... That, that takes a little bit of weight off of me. I do, I was, I do not eat the peel of me. the banana. I've okay. tried that. About like a watermelon, like the green, the uh, rind part? No, I don't eat that okay, either. Okay, that's good. So there's a... There's, there's a few things. You draw the line. There's a... There's, <laughs> I have drawn the line. Okay. And But, uh, but I do eat the peel of a lot of things. So there is a little bit of uh, truth to that, to that rumor. Um, so this next question I want to ask you. Um, but it really is funny because you're sitting there doing that, and I just do it without even thinking. Yeah. And I'm around people that maybe I don't know, and, and all of a sudden like, they're just, what I don't realize, doing? but they're just staring at yeah. me like, he's eating all of that. And I'm like, <laughs> well, don't, doesn't everybody? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's hilarious. So this next question, um, if, you've, if you've talked to Pastor Rodney within the past few years, you're going to learn something quick, is that he is now a grandpa. Um, he has been for a couple years, a few years now. Um, I want to ask you, what is the biggest difference between being a parent and being a grandparent for you? Oh, that's easy. Uh, a whole lot less responsibility. Yeah. And a whole lot more just enjoying. It's a lot more fun. I don't want to say more oh, fun. I don't want to say more fun. Uh, abs well, it's more fun that you don't have the uh, stress of other type of responsibilities. Yeah. You just step in mm -hmm. and just enjoy. Yeah. And then you kind of walk away. Um, and, and, you know, and we may take them for a day or two, yeah. um, but that's a whole different ball game than every single day <laughs> you have to be responsible, getting them up, Absolutely. get them ready. Do, and so it's just like the best of both worlds. You yeah. kind of enjoy everything come in and out mm -hmm. and, um, you don't really discipline. You just kind of have fun you with them. You just have fun just, and hang out. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, for me, that's it. So I want to ask you, I want you to tell, tell the audience just a little bit about your grandkids, um, just about them, their age, um, and just tell me your favorite thing about each of your grandkids. Okay. Well, uh, that's easy. Um, first off is uh, Rodney Gideon Fouts, who just turned three years of age. And awesome. That, that'll be a fun age for you to hang out with him, I'm oh, sure. It's, it's terrific, terrific. Yeah. And so uh, Rodney Gideon has had the most uh, stage time at North Church because he's been around the longest. Yeah. And he's at an age where, you know, just really um, a, lot, a lot of stories to tell. Mm -hmm. So this past weekend, I keep th three illustrations was with, with him. Yeah. And he... Which were really, really, really funny stories. Yeah, yeah. They were good stories. So he is a blast right now. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think for, uh, we call him Gideon, Rodney Gideon, and which is interesting because we have multiple generations, about many, like six generations of RGFs. Oh, wow. So he, it's Rodney Gideon. Of course, then his dad is Rodney Gavin Fouts, mm -hmm. goes by Gavin. And then I'm Rodney Gerald Fouts. Uh, and wow. then my dad is Roy Gideon, uh, Roy, Roy Gerald Fouts. And then his dad was Roy Gideon Fouts. And it just kind of keeps wow. going on and on and on. So, That's pretty cool. That's so it's not like cool. a second, not like, you know, third, fourth, and fifth, yeah. but it's all same yeah. initials, RGFs. That's cool. 
Uh, and so with Gideon, uh, it is just his sheer um, excitement and joy. Mm. He has fun. And so it is fun to be around him. That's awesome. And he does things even unknowingly <laughs> that are funny that he doesn't even get yet. It's like pointing with the wrong finger. And you I mentioned that the, line, the other day. But you he's pointing the other day. with the wrongest finger that you can point with. <laughs> and so it was like, this is hilarious. And um, But anyway, it's hilarious for a three-year-old. Yeah. That doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> and so then is Shepherd James Bounce. And he is 19 months old. Oh, it's so adorable. What is so wonderful about him is that he is so lovable. Mm -hmm. He will just cuddle oh yeah and so on vacation <laughs> he laid between shannon and i they mm -hmm. sl slept in bed with us mm -hmm. so he's the one that slept with us and getting slept with somebody else and he slept right between us and just so enjoyable how he would just look up at you and say your name tutu yeah. and tutu is my name for the uh, we'll get to that we'll get to okay. tutu i so promise anyway, but anyway so shepherd james mm -hmm. and then you have uh eleanor mm -hmm. wonder fouts wonder Wonder's the middle name. I like that's she's really cool. Wonderful. <laughs> and so Eleanor Wonder Fouts. And um obviously she's just you know, baby right now, yeah. just still weeks old. But um just she is so good. Uh the boys were not as good. They were all the time, mm -hmm. you know, demanding something. But mm -hmm. she is just so chill, yeah. relax, and just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And then the fourth one, which is on the way is Schuyler and Schuyler Day, that's Phaedra's uh, baby who is still in the womb, uh, is due around August the 1st, mm -hmm. and we are thrilled about that. <laughs> and so I have no uh, really um, points of saying <laughs> right. personality that right. I've got right now, other than that she's growing the mama's yeah. belly. And that's so awesome. we're looking forward to meeting her. So I said we would touch on Tutu. My next question was, um, was so that your grandkids, they call you Tutu. Do you want, where, where did that come from? Because I believe, I, if I'm remembering correctly, like I said, I've, I've heard Pastor Rodney preach, I don't know how many times, I've heard a lot of stories. If I'm remembering correctly, um, you were the one that came up with the name Tutu, is that right? Uh, kind of, sort of, yes. Okay, so do you want to tell the story about that, about where that came from? Because that's okay. not like a, it's not like a grandpa or a papa, yeah. like it's not something you would normally hear. So, so my son uh, has called me Pops over the years, mm -hmm. um, uh, and he just would do that, Gavin. Uh, and I think that him and uh, Shannon and some of them were starting to try to call me Pops. Mm -hmm. That's where they were going with this. Yeah. And I really didn't want to have a name that a lot of other people Yeah, called. you wanted to be something a little, yeah, a little so like, so like, less common. So like my grandmother, I called her Grandma. And then my mm -hmm. mom is called Grandma too. Mm -hmm. And so it's like with our kids, sometimes we've got to distinguish who's Grandma, which, which Grandma. Yeah. Well, it's Grandma Fouts, older Grandma Fouts, or grandma, <laughs> grandma, my mom's Fouts too. Mm -hmm. And so it's always trying to distinguish. So I wanted a name that's different, that most yeah. people would not be able to you know, like have. Mm -hmm. And so, so I didn't want to really grab or papa or even pops. And there's others that could have been used. Um, so I just thought about it and we went on a trip to Hawaii and I found out that over there in the, um, Hawaiians that, that tutu means grandfather. Okay. And so I came back with that like, Hey, let's give it a shot. And literally when Gideon heard that name, mm -hmm. when he was first starting to talk, yeah. he just like immediately called me tutu. Yeah. So you knew it was the right one, huh? So I knew it was the right one, so it's been two-two ever since. <laughs> That's awesome. That's because I knew the first grandchild yeah. would be the one to really establish yeah. what it was going to be. Yeah, we've talked about what um, Sawyer and Olivia, my brother and sister, they're expecting. We've talked about what they're going to call our parents, and then Sawyer's like, you know, it's going to just be whatever the kid calls them. Um, and so at first I thought maybe Gideon came up with Tutu and he just started calling you that. But then I remember you telling that story that you were actually the one that had kind of introduced that to him. So that's, a, that's an interesting story, though. I like that. Um, so my next question is, it's about you. All right. Right now, if, if you weren't a pastor, what do you think you would be doing for a living instead? If you had to guess, obviously this is a big what if question. Cause you, how long have, how long have you been in ministry now? Well, I've been in ministry now for, um, since really 1991. Yeah. So this is a big what if question. We have to, make, we, make we have to take away much. a little bit of, a little bit of time to figure that one out. Yeah. So that's over 30 years yeah. that I've been doing ministry. Um, and so that is a tough question to be able to know mm -hmm. before I went in 
to the ministry, I was actually looking toward medical school. I got a mm-hmm. degree in biochemistry. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I got the degree in biochemistry was prepping myself uh, for medical school. And so that's the direction I was going to he- head. So um, um, I would say potentially in the medical field okay. um, as a doctor okay. uh, would be probably one of those things that yeah. I feel like that I could have done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also feel like I've always, for the last many years, uh, had some side gigs in regards to mm-hmm. building or properties or yeah. stuff like that and so uh, we, the home that we live in now I built I was a general contractor and did mm-hmm. and Shannon designed it and so um, I could have went that direction also yeah. but I would probably lean to the medical field okay interesting there you guys are getting a little bit a little bit inside the head of Pastor Rodney right now um, just to learn a little bit about him so this next question for you you're gonna have to think back a little ways on this one as well because um, like I said this is North Church's 20th birthday was this year um, in all the time that you've been at North Church, you've preached however many se- different series, different messages. Um, is there a series that stands out to you and you're like, that is my favorite series that I have ever done, that the church has ever put on? Um, is there any that you just really, really enjoyed? That you could, Obviously, I know you probably enjoy all of them, um, but is there any that just stand out to you as your favorite? I haven't really thought about that because yeah. really... My favorite one's always the one I'm doing now. Yeah, because that, that's <laughs> the one where your attention is going, I'm sure. <laughs> it really is. It, it just always has been uh, whatever I'm doing now mm-hmm. is the most fun and the most enjoyable yeah. and the best. Yeah. And so it's <laughs> like, um, but I've ha- had a lot of people over the years reference uh, different series. Mm-hmm. And the ones I've heard even the last few months, um, a series that we called Nudge. Mm-hmm. It was on the Holy Spirit. Yeah, uh, I, I do remember that series. And so that was one that uh, um, I think stuck with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, guardrails. I did one on, called Guardrails, and I think that was something I hear still people talking mm-hmm. about. So there's those that I hear people talking about. But for me, it's really kind of like right now, it's signpost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that's a That's a good answer. And if you guys, um, like I said, if you're not a part of North Church um, and you just happen to be watching this, welcome to this video. Um, but we would love to have you here at North Church. If you're like, wow, this Pastor Rodney guy's kind of cool. I could listen to him. I could listen to him to preach. Um, we do have experiences on Thursday at 7 and on Sunday at 8.30, 10, and 11.30. I had to look at Pastor Rodney, make sure I was getting those right. But I, I knew them all. I knew them all. And also we have Guthrie, too. We do have our Guthrie location. They have a Thursday yep. night, 7 o'clock also. Yep. And then they have uh, Sunday mornings yep. at 9.30 and 11 o'clock. 9.30 and 11 o'clock. There you go. So if, if you're in the Oklahoma City area or the Guthrie area or anywhere really in Oklahoma, um, you can find one of those locations. And we're, they're, they're also streamed online, yes. um, live on, I believe, Facebook and YouTube, I know for sure. Yeah, and um, also you can go to the website too. Go to the website, Church. north.church. So three, three, different, said, three different platforms north. that they Church will be down below, um, linked in the description. So if you are curious, you can go there and find that there. So I just have a few more questions for you, Pastor Rodney. I think just three more. Um, this, for, this next one. So I'm not just saying this because he's here. I've said this to multiple people. I've heard, I've listened to a lot of different messages by a lot of different preachers. But I will say Pastor Rodney is my favorite preacher to listen to. I don't know if it's just because I have that relationship with him. Um, but like I said, I've heard him however many times and I've never gotten tired of it. I want to ask you, who is your favorite pastor or preacher to listen to? Um, cause I, obviously you, you can't listen to yourself preach that, that, that would just be a little, I feel like that would be a little, a uh, little confusing. Um, so who is your favorite pastor or preacher to hear? Well, first off, let me just say thank you for, uh, just mentioning me as far as you enjoy hearing mm-hmm. me. And I think the kingdom of God is built on relationships yeah. and it's very important. I think mm-hmm. that I honestly think it's like, um, your kids should be the best. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as a parent, there's something wrong with you if you don't feel like your kids are the best. <laughs> yeah. Really? There should yeah. be. No, I get And what I think saying. that should be the same way with somebody who goes to a church. Yeah. Your pastor should be the best. Yeah. You should want to listen to the pastor that you hear them, that you yeah. enjoy the most. You, you, you should get really. Them. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I think that any, that kingdom of God's built mm-hmm. on relationships and you should mm-hmm. walk in saying, I love hearing him. Yeah. Now he may be different than somebody else. He mm-hmm. might not be as talented or as gifted in, as some other communicators, mm-hmm. but that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's your shepherd that's pouring into yeah. you and you should want to. So that's first that I would really, that was very well put to, to think about. Um, and then secondly, in regards to listening mm-hmm. to me, I don't, li- I don't like listening. <laughs> yeah. To I'd imagine I, you probably don't go back and listen to yourself. Now, now I will, I will to, 
to critique to, yeah, things to better that I yourself. But absolutely. I do not listen to because I've enjoyed that. <laughs> like, I just want to listen to me. That, was a, that was a good message on Sunday, Rodney. I'm going <laughs> to go back and listen to that yeah, one. That, that comes to a weird and a <laughs> yeah. uh, little bit narcissistic. And yeah. like, no, I don't want to go there. Um, so I've always actually struggled. I, I think a lot of people do that. Mm. I think the majority of people do struggle I, listening to that. I've never watched one of these episodes. I, my mom has had them on and I've been in there, yeah. but I've never, I can't go back and watch myself. Yeah. I, I don't like the way I sound. I don't no, like, no. Yeah. I, I, and that's common yeah. for, I would say 90% of the people. Mm -hmm. And then the other 10%, they're weird. <laughs> <laughs> There's some problems probably. <laughs> um, so to listen to certain, um, uh, pastors, um, Man, there, there are a number of great communicators out there. Mm -hmm. I think one of my long-term favorites has always been T.D. Jakes mm -hmm. uh, because I just think he's brilliant. Yeah, I think he's brilliant in how he breaks down the word. I love his passion, which, which he delivers it. Um, and so he's been a long-term favorite of mine mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, over the, probably the last few years, mm -hmm. uh, I've really enjoyed Stephen Furtick. I've enjoyed uh, listening to his messages, yeah. um, the way he preaches. Um, I enjoy that i'm not as much of a teacher mm -hmm. um but and i really believe in inspiring people mm -hmm. but yet i want to give them some depth yeah and absolutely some content too absolutely and so um i really feel like you know td jakes did that i feel like yeah. the verdict does that and so those are two names that yeah. come to my mind awesome um so this next question obviously this is purely hypothetical so don't take this next question seriously for those of you watching at home um so you have a lot of men here on north church staff a lot of great men. Um, I'd say they're all great men. Um, if, hypothetically, all of these men, which, again, this would never happen, if they were to get into a big all-out brawl, who is coming out of that as the winner? That's easy. Me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I, would, I would put my money on Hetty Coleman. Really? The most yeah. teddy bear, the most compassionate, mm -hmm. the most loving mm -hmm. of all the staff guys <laughs> but yet you got to be careful it's the one that's yeah. the uh less assuming yeah that is the most uh dangerous <laughs> yeah. yeah and so uh and also his past history before he got saved mm -hmm. and if he were to just flip back for just a moment into that uh past heady yeah coleman <laughs> yeah <laughs> it would be bad for all okay. of us. So I, I, I would put my money on Hedy. That's why I told him a long time ago. I said, you know what? You and I would have been best buds yeah. uh, when we were, in, <laughs> if we were in high school and stuff, yeah. even if he wasn't living for God. Yeah. Uh, because I said, I always attached myself to the toughest one <laughs> because I wanted to be friends with the toughest and the baddest one yeah. just in case things went poorly. Yeah. I wanted to be on his side. Yeah. So um, I would, it's, it's Pastor Hedy Coleman in Guthrie. And so if you don't know him, check him out. And uh, I, w I would just have to go that direction. I like, that's, a, that's a good answer. I will say, um, I asked my brother Sawyer this question when he was on, because he was also on staff at North Church. And he said his top three would be Pastor Hetty, Pastor Rodney, and then Pastor Carlos. Because um, Car Pastor Carlos is just, he's a unit. <laughs> he's yeah, a big yeah, guy. He, yeah, you you got a point there with Carlos, because he is just, mm -hmm. you know, cause he's just a big man. Yeah. Um, and big makes a difference yeah. when you're an all-out brawl. Yeah. Because uh, he's like 6'4 and 225 yeah, pounds. Yeah, he's a big guy. Just, a just muscle, guy. yeah. Uh, but but I, st I still got to go with Pastor Hedy. And in your defense, Sawyer said that, I think he said that he would actually have you win for the pure reason he said, Pastor Rodney's too competitive. He said he's not going to let someone else beat him. Um, well, those, those guys physically, mm -hmm. if it boiled down to it, could take <laughs> no question about that. But But... I don't know, I have to, my brain maybe would help me. Out. I'm trying to figure <laughs> that out. That willpower is going to push you I'm through. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead. Okay, I like that. So this is the last question. Um, funny enough, it's actually also about fighting. I don't know how that happened, but this is the question that I ask um, every guest on Pillow Talk at the end: Is what is the biggest animal that you think you could beat in a fight? Now, just, you're talking about just like the name, the type of animal that right. could be a yes. fully grown yeah. animal. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you don't have any weapons or anything. It's just you, um, just you and your fists. And I'll tell you a couple answers why you think. Sawyer, who is very, um, he, I guess he thinks of a lot of, of himself in this sense. Because he said, oh, I, I could beat a grizzly bear in a fight. I said, Sawyer, no, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. And then Pastor Christian, I had him on, and he said, I couldn't beat any animal in a fight. I'm too scared of animals. I couldn't beat any animal in a fight. And so it's fallen somewhere in between there. Um, so I want to ask, what do you think? 
is the biggest animal you could take on in a fight? Well, first off, mm -hmm. Sawyer. No. <laughs> you There's no way. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no. uh, God would have to show up. And just show himself powerful Amen. for that to happen. It would but be the lion's den all over again. But it's not going to be you. Yeah, <laughs> um, man, that's a tough one. Um, you know, I've always thought because I've actually been chased by dogs, and mm -hmm. I've had is that uh, I feel like I could take a wolf for a dog. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say something confidently that I know that I can handle is um, maybe even up to a uh, a cougar, okay, or something. Yeah. I feel like that I might be able to take okay. a fully grown yeah. cougar, which those things could be, I mean, it might not be easy, but if, if yeah. I could, but I'm, I'm actually, death. I actually, yeah. I actually <laughs> think about these things. I think about if I'm in a moment, what <laughs> yeah. would it would, what would I do? But if a cougar was coming at me, one is I know that I wouldn't run. Mm -hmm. I know that I would stare him down yeah. and I would take him on Okay, and, and then just pray for the best. <laughs> and then the first thing is just, if I can just get that, his mouth or some way around his neck mm -hmm. to keep his jaws from yeah, latching from, hold of yeah. me. And then if I can do that, yeah. then I feel like I can handle him. That was a very insightful answer. He had he had how he was going to beat it and everything. Oh, I think how he was going to fight it at it's least. Weird. And I think men do this. Obviously, no, women, I do. women do not think about this. Right. <laughs> so they're going to be like, what are they talking about right now? Yeah, yeah. Women are like, I've never thought of that. Yeah. Uh, but as a man, I think a lot of men think about that stuff. If I, I'm in a I situation, the what would I do? Yeah. And um, I do think about that. I've thought about that with the grizzly bears and stuff. But again, it'd have to be the grace of God. <laughs> but I think a, I think a cougar. I don't know about a lion. I yeah. think a lion would be another step up. Yeah, a lion's kind of the next but tier. Like, but, yeah. that, but that cougar, a fully grown cougar, mm -hmm. I think that I could do that. Okay. So, Pastor Rodney, that was my last question for you. Um, so unless you have any questions or anything you want to say, um, that's pretty much all I got for you. Well, let me, let me just say to everybody, it was an honor and a privilege to be able to be on with you, mm -hmm. um, Shane, and just... And, and I'm glad that you're joining us. I hope that you share this with others and invite them to follow the journey with, um, with Shane. And because I'm sure that I know that he's had some very interesting, exciting individuals on here mm -hmm. that um, is not only going to be inspiring you and encouraging you and helping you, but I want to say thank you. Thank you for yeah, absolutely. Uh, what you do to make North Church the uh, strong, wonderful church that it is. Thank you for your investment over the years. Absolutely. Thank you for sticking with us. And I'm proud of you. And I'm excited to see what God has in store for you. I appreciate that. So thank you all for watching. Like Pastor Ronnie said, this has been Pillow Talk. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>